Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making House a Home with myself, Sana Araji, and our guest, Fahima Muhammad, who is a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Now, today we're going to be discussing the subject of uh, bridging the gap between the older and the younger generation, how we can do that, what steps to take forward. Mm-hmm. Um, can you just uh, briefly explain? with regards to this subject for this us? This is not just a topic that's just come up because we realise that, you know, um, there is much of a generation gap and there are definitely importance placed on it, mm-hmm. not just from a psychological perspective or not just from living in this day and age because, you know, people are living, you know, longer. Um, but the thing is, Islamically as well, you know, there's lots of benefits to it. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, you know, states in one of that hadith to say that, you know, to honour your elderly and make bond of kinship. And it's the best way is to make bond is to avoid annoying them um, because there is a difference in mindset mm-hmm. we have to obviously be aware of that yeah. regardless of the times that we're in <clears throat> when there's a huge gap in between the ages there is a different sense of experience and what we mm-hmm. face and how we take that forward and how we see things and we always look even now you hear a lot oh teenagers are not grateful they don't appreciate they got things easy we had to work harder or, you know, we have the youngsters talking like and saying that, you know, the older generation don't understand us, they don't appreciate us, they look at, look at us as all as being someone who is actually not working hard and not striving. So, you know, there's a lot of generalizations, but actually yeah. between the both, they need to come together and realize and see that, you know, with both sides, there is definitely, you know, benefits to having that sort of, you know, <clears throat> connection closer, mm. not just within families, but just generally, you know, I know a lot of um, young people that have grown up in their families that they've hung out with their older brothers or and they've you know surrounded themselves with the older generation and it has made a difference and an impact to their lives and how they see things mm. in a very positive way so there is very much benefit you know benefits to it and also um, you know we need to have mercy within each other Imam Ali alayhi salam states in one of his uh, sermons that let your youngsters be good with the elderly and let your elderly have mercy upon your youngsters. So there needs to be an allowance to give each other a chance to do certain things, even though you think they're not capable. Mm. But each of us brings something, a learning, a lesson, a teaching, you know, the experience you can get from both. And you have to be, um, whatever age you are, you have to be current, but at the same time, you know, we need support so that we have a variety of information to us. Yeah. And even though we have knowledge and information from books and, you know, the internet and whatever it may be, but having experience by listening to somebody going through something, mm. I think it's so much more vital. And I think you can, you can learn a lot more, a lot more deeper because it's actually more realistic. Yeah, sure. So when you listen to people's stories, you know, that you can probably relate to more so because the, the books are theory in, a, in a, you know, in essence. Mm-hmm, yeah. And a lot of it is, you know, things that doesn't, most people say, well, it's not reality and I cannot practice it and I cannot conform in that way and I cannot do certain things. But when people are talking about the way in which they live or mm. they lived, then, you know, that is a teaching and a learning that another generation can use for sure. themselves for real yeah. and it's really vital subhanallah and you know now i feel like with social media and uh like so many things coming out on tv that parents who are older than their children don't seem to understand uh like how to monitor their children with mm. these things so mm-hmm. that can be an issue do you think parents if they are, which nowadays a lot of parents are having children a lot older, yes. not like before. Yes. So the gap is is big between the child and the, and the parents. Do you think they need to take steps to educate themselves to get with the time? Absolutely. Um, in order, it's not just being aware and to be friends, but to mm. know what they're getting up to so that you can be on one step ahead of them. Mm. And you need to be. You know, let's just be real about it. You know, kids are a lot more smarter. Mm. They are on the internet, even with parental guidance, control, whatever it may be, they can still override that. And it's not because, you know, you want to stop them from having fun or doing what activities and games they might be playing, but you actually will be protecting them, you know, if you are aware of their, you know, ways of being, because there's still not much awareness, even from youngsters, when they put themselves in those situations, when they are, you know, even chatting online or making friends and whatever. And there's a lot of, you know, 
friendships that are being made online and they don't know who they're speaking to and parents need to be you know aware of how to intervene how to be able to look ahead of that mm. but they cannot do that if firstly they don't think that their, their children are actually doing that or capable of doing it or overriding them yeah. and don't just take their word for it it's not about not having the trust but because at the same time you know the children teenagers themselves they just don't look at it as harmful again because they have the lack of experience you know having that age behind you is not just wisdom the wisdom comes because of the experience a lot of kids are aware of in and have all the information as adults do if not more but yeah, they sure. don't know how to use it or they do not have the experience and the youngsters need to understand that so they appreciate that I know more than even my parents do but I don't necessarily know how to use it and parents need to know that yes kids are more aware and they are more knowledgeable but at the same time I need to keep keep up to that level mm. or beyond and you know at the same time you know we need to protect them from that knowledge because it's so much knowledge they don't know how to absorb it they don't know how to use it and you know it can be dangerous in in any form yeah sure and and also when you're an older parent you might have different techniques that you would use with yeah. your child that actually don't work for exactly. this day and age definitely so you might be in conflict with your child because they don't understand how you're trying to explain to them or to to discipline them or to guide them but they need more emotional support or they yes. need other techniques that the parent doesn't know or isn't aware of how how would you go you know along with those lines as a as a parent who's older to bridge the gap between the generation? Well, you know, you have to also have a different mindset and mentality because the issue is ageism there. Mm. And obviously, you know, that should be something where it needs to be corrected and they need to be like intergenerational programs where, you know, people are sort of reaching out to different age groups and bringing them together. So mm. we need to take responsibility as a community to do that. Right. Um, even with parenting, you don't have to be parents to be a great role model. You can be a young man or woman in the community and wanting to give out and share information. It's the same like that if you're older or younger. Mm -hmm. And you know, bring groups together so that we can actually learn from one another and you know, have workshops within you know, your community, your center, you know, your mosques or whatever. And yes, we have certain, you know, uh, we do segregate a lot because we have for the young and different age and stages, but sometimes mix it up a bit. Okay. I mean, in schools nowadays, they do that. I've just heard recently for secondary schools, that in the tutor groups, they've got different ages so that they can learn from each other and have the experience. So that is a very good way of knowing that they're doing that now in certain secondary mm -hmm. schools where you're not just with your own form and your own year. You're actually yeah. mixing with different year groups in your form tutor, but then when you go for the actual lessons individually, then you are in your own ability and groups or whatever it may be. And that alone is showing how that generation gap, even between those few years, yeah. makes a difference with the learning. Yeah, sure. That's so we could use the same technique with the generations that are here within our families and the roles that we play. Mm -hmm. And each one has a value to give, you know, whether they're young or old. And that's the thing. If you think you're young and you know too much or you think you're old and you know even more, whatever it may be, or there's not enough information, just keep that out of your head and okay. just be open. Right. And, you know, set up these sort of groups, which is nothing to do with, you know, segregating by age and stage because we have enough of that already. We need to now mix and integrate a little bit more so we can have further learning. And sometimes our own people, when we stick in the same way, we cannot move forward. Again, you know, having your friendship groups, even as a, a teenager, I know teenagers that sometimes they might do a paper round or they might have jobs in a local shop and they will become friends with the owner. Okay. And they will continue that friendship later on and they'll go in there and see them even if they're not working because they've learned things, they've listened to conversations. And it's taking that interest to know that, you know, I did this job and this is how it was. Also, it becomes, you could become grateful as to in this generation how things can be easy mm -hmm. and readily available. Whereas yeah. time and, you know, technology is, you know, improved, whereas we didn't have any of that and things took longer. And, you know, things were really, you know, appreciated a lot more because you had to work harder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need to realize that as youngsters because you're not understanding how much the world around you is actually accommodating you so easily. And mm. as humans, we adapt. And when we adapt, we get used to it. And then we don't become grateful. And all we do is want more. Yeah, very true. I mean, some would even say that with the older generation. Yes. They tend to be quick to judge, judgmental. Yes. Of the, the old young, mindset. Yeah. Yes. Thinking, well, you know, in my day, that wasn't acceptable. 
they don't want to come to terms with today. They yes. want to live very true. In, in, in the past and how it was. So when they are observing perhaps a young girl who might be married very young or a teenage pregnancy, for them, I mean, I know on many occasions where, uh, you know, there's been teenage girls on the, on the bus who are in, in my city where I'm from, where they've had babies at such a young age. And you just feel this eerie feeling when, from the older um, generation, like the way they're looking at them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, making judgment, whereas they don't know the situation. There are some cases where girls, unfortunately, are raped and get pregnant. Yeah. You can't jump into uh, kind of uh, you Conflict, can't understand yeah. them unless you're going through what they're going through so I feel sometimes they are a bit critical but to be fair with that's not things. necessarily even with the elderly that's just people in general being so judgmental mm. and we do tend to judge but obviously being in an old mindset it's harder for you to change and adapt mm -hmm. so you know especially for the older generation don't be also resistant and sometimes it's also a feeling that well we did it in a you know and we had it tough so you guys also have to suffer instead of accepting that you know times change people evolve things evolve and you know let's just get with it let's just appreciate that even though it's fast forward and they have things easy but there are other things that are now you know that they have to suffer for mm -hmm. in that Very sense true, yeah. so you know they, they again it's it's all about perspective it's all about learning it's all about being open right and okay. you have to have the psychology for that and at the same time you know we need to work with younger people and older people because there's so many skills out there in the way in which you know even things that were done in the past you know need to actually come into this into play now because we rely so much on technology and we look at even if we want to do business we just want to send an email but then the old way is you know what let's go out and actually have a conversation or meet them and then we can build that rapport that they will be in business with us for generations because not everyone does that yeah. and that could be helpful so you know techniques like that can still work mm. I'm just giving that as an example there must be various more but that's how it, and I'm talking that in a, from a business perspective so at the same time um, in Britain we do have you know uh, an issue where there are a lot of people living for longer so it is a strain to a certain extent especially with the culture in Britain mm -hmm. where you know this you know the health the, whatever the, the services the public services are being stretched and they don't have the necessary the culture which we are brought up with where we would keep our generations in one home and mm -hmm. look after our parents so in that sense we do you know have that advantage where it's not seen to be wrong to be living with your family and you're not you know, going to be judged in a particular way if you're older or if you're married and you keep your parents with you if they're not able. But at the same time, I have heard cases where you know, it's a problem now even in our cultures where they don't want the in-laws, they, they don't want the grandparents living in their own homes. And you know, it's, it's a very touchy subject and obviously it depends on the circumstances. And, you know, obviously with how they get along and if they become a burden, and they mm. seem to be a certain things. But it's the way you look at it again. Mm. And when you are in a marriage and you have to have to live with your in-laws or if you're in a marriage and you've got your grandparents, you know, your parents living with you and they become the grandparents of your children. You know, there are pros and cons to that, you know, so there's lots of issues. But at the same time, it's taking every situation that you're in. Right. and building it into an advantage and hopefully whatever is negative sort of like fizz fizzles away because of the way in which you're looking at it and you work on those positives and you can change those ways so it's important for generations to get together from an islamic point of view as well as from a business point of view and especially mm -hmm. in the home um, there's a lot of benefits in learning and wisdom and experience there's a lot of you know help can be provided i mean the young can gain wisdom, whereas the old can gain the strength that they don't have anymore, for example. Mm. I mean, There's so an, many things. An, another um, gap that just came to my mind was when you're married to someone who is a lot older than you, mm -hmm. bridging the gap between the husband and the wife, the spouse, that I've seen in many uh, examples in, in my life where that can be difficult because where one mindset is, another yes. isn't. Yes. That is also something it's a lot of compromise there. A compromise between the two different, yes. uh, you know, age gaps because there are some gaps that are fifteen years, twenty yeah. years. Yeah. So you know, it, it depends. So. And that's really common where the men is older, the man is older. But now it's actually turning around where women are marrying younger men. Yes. Yeah. And even to that age limit, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. you know, 
ten, eight years, you know, younger than them. It is happening because mm -hmm. some men, you know, will prefer someone who is a lot more stronger, stable, and you know, want a woman with, you know, that is a little bit more confident or whatever it may be that comes with age. So there is definitely issues that do come with it, but in life there's always issues and it depends which one you want to take on and which one you want to overcome. Sure so that. don't think that you can't overcome these and mm -hmm. it cannot happen and it cannot work. But a lot of times we're influenced by society and cultural norms, but in Islam there's definitely no you know, problems with you know, even older women getting married to younger men, as we know as our mm -hmm. prophet, peace be upon him, and his family did himself. Yes. But it's, not, it's looked down upon. I know young girls are not getting married because the guy's only two, three years younger. And they're thinking, oh, the mindset's not there. The thing. But in the end, you're delaying your marriage and you're not even moving forward. You're not even trying to work at it. You've just got this perception. You've got the set mindset, which is fixed. Mm -hmm. And you're not moving forward. Your life's not moving forward. And you're missing out on years ahead just from that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for that, Fahima, and inshallah, you've enlightened the viewers with this topic. Um, unfortunately, we do need to go for a break and uh, we'll come back and answer the viewers' questions. So we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the second part of Making a House a Home where we've been discussing the topic of bridging the gap between the older and the younger generation. Now, um, we're going to answer some questions from our viewers, if you can answer that for us, Fahima. Mm -hmm. So we have Hussein, and the question he's asking is, my parents are quite old and finding it difficult to manage living by themselves, and I worry all the time as I cannot be there so often. However, I want them to live with us, but my wife is very resistant, and it's a constant issue and sometimes an argument. How do I get her to understand and accept this? It is a case where there has to come to a point where they both understand what is the reason and the meaning behind it. Again, now you have to come up with logical answers for this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time it's about emotion, it's about also um, people like to look into the future assuming things may happen if something was to happen and that stops them and that also creates fear. Right. So we need to be present and we need to know our responsibilities and our duties, even if it's not our parents or anyone else's parents. And you need to sit and have a conversation logically as to why exactly and is it realistic what he's asking for? Is it just an assumption that he's making that his parents need to come and stay with him and that's what he feels? Because sometimes these parents nowadays even, they want their independency, that mm -hmm. I don't want to live with my son and my daughter and their family and become a babysitter. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard this, yeah. you know, whatever it may be, or left. Or they might be like, I'd love to do that because I'd want to be part of the family again because now I'm left by myself. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that that is clear. Secondly, to make the wife understand, you know, it could be turned around, it could be her parents the following year or months later and not necessarily where the woman would have her parents live with her, but regardless, there might be times where she needs to visit more, they can live closer, whatever it may be, but logic needs to come into it mm -hmm. as to why this has to be. And there has to be real meaning and reason behind it and for real situations and scenarios. Don't just assume and presume. Parties need to sit together and what are the implications and the impact of them living together with regards to themselves as a re having relationships with the children you know, um, there are advantages and disadvantages to it. You know, yeah. um, there are a lot of cases that I come across that, you know, um, families do complain and they don't want to be, you know, part of, you know, the extended family living in under all under one roof. But in some cultures within the Muslim, you know, communities, mm -hmm. it is a must, it's, ex it's accepted, ex expected, and it's accepted, you know, unwillingly. And you have to understand you know, are you able to tolerate that? And to what extent and what changes do you have to make to see it differently mm -hmm. if it's something you can't get out of? It's not something that you and I can make a decision for and to say which is right and wrong. There is no right or mm -hmm. wrong. Each circumstance and situation will have to be according to that particular way. Yeah. There is no right or wrong answer. We cannot say that, no, you shouldn't and you should live with your parents or not or your in-laws. There's no such thing. Each one has to figure it out for themselves and how to make it work. And for some people it works and for some people it doesn't. And even it's trial and error in some circumstances. Mm. But you've got to prepare for it. I know it's a big commitment. But um, you have to be open because we are all growing. Exactly, we are all yeah. going to be parents. We are yeah. all going to be grandparents. 
you know, we're not going to stay like this forever. We want someone to show us that mercy and that understanding as well. And sometimes we need to sacrifice and Allah gives us challenges that we have to face. We've got to take it. Mm. We've got to put up with it. As, as Muslims, we have a duty towards yeah. our parents. And I know it's easier to say it than to do it. But with this one, I, the parents are very old. Yeah. Now, we don't know. They could be unwell. They might not have long. We mm -hmm. don't know. But we do have a duty towards them. Yes. And I guess at this point, this, this comes down to the, to the husband to put his foot down if his parents are being a bit intolerable. So he, if, if yes, his parents... Yes, from both sides. Yeah, yes. from both sides. Yeah. So if, if, if it's his parents and he sees that they're doing something wrong or being disrespectful yeah. to his Absolutely. wife, that's the point where he needs to not allow that. He needs to put his foot down and make his wife understand that I will yeah. bring it up. That's if my a very parents valid point. are disrespectful to you so yeah. that they know. But there if are, that was the issue. If yes. that was the issue. Yeah. But there are cases where sons do not do that and yes. daughters don't do that. So and then they just expect, yeah. Exactly. So inshallah, hopefully, uh, you know. Yeah, no, they need to address Hussain it can, quite can openly, yeah. Handle that, inshallah. Our next viewer is Manar. And um, the question is, my in-laws come from abroad to visit once a year and they stay for at least two months. I do respect them, but we are a very... We are very different and we come from different backgrounds as I am Khoja and my husband is from Pakistan. We do get along but their, their way of living does disrupt the house in many ways and, it now, and it's now becoming a time I really do not look forward to. How do I cope and deal with this situation? It's quite similar to the one before. Mm -hmm. It's about learning to adapt and accept and you know what? Yes, we have different cultures and different way of being and we'd all like it ourselves the same way but you married into something different in the first place. And unfortunately, you know, we don't just accept our spouses, we accept their families too. And you yeah. know, when you're considering marriage, these things need to be considered in the future as to what you need to put up with, you know, in times like this. And for her, it is only two, three times, three, you know, three, two, three months in the year, however it may be. And yes, it may be disruptive and it might be whatever, but again, you need to address it as to which part is being played and who's taking responsibility. And the husband needs to stand up, the wife needs to stand up, they need to sit together, come to some sort of like arrangement. You know, we'd all love to have big houses where we have this, you know, the space where we can have our independence. And obviously that needs to be taken into consideration that it's not like that and not all the time that family will consider your practicalities, the daily practicals that's happening. All they want is to see their son or their daughter and spend time with them. Mm, sure. So you've got to understand the underlying issue there that you need to put up sometimes and, you know, keep up with these things or make plans for, to make it more comfortable in the future. We plan for everything else. We plan mm. for holidays, maybe taking time out to plan for something that we can make it more spacious for us, you know. Um, I know people that have actually moved and I know they've you know, turn, turned a, a study into a room for them when it comes or you know, turn the, I don't know, uh, an extra space just so that they can have that. I'm not saying to like build an outward garden or whatever, uh, annex, but you know, it can be done. Mm. But at the same time, again, we need to learn that we are going to be faced with different challenges. And again, there's a lot of it when it comes to in-laws mm -hmm. and, you know, different generations from different families. And yes, there are different cultures with different ways of being, but there's nothing wrong in staying like that. The foundations are the same. We have to all, you know, pray and eat cer certain foods from different exactly. cultures and enjoy it, mm -hmm. embrace it. And the difficulties, work through it. Inshallah, thank you very much. I hope hopefully that explanation can help our viewer. Um, our next viewer is Huda. My children are taken care of by the grandparents, which I am grateful for as I work full time. There is an issue with the upbringing as I feel that my children do not listen to me or respect my rules because they are taught differently when with their grandparents and are actually given more freedom than I would like. Can you suggest ways to make the grandparents understand that it's not good for the children or me without offending me? Yes. Offending them, sorry. Yeah, that is very, very vital because I'm really like strong on, you know, raising children a particular way. And even if you're not there, it's very easy to tell someone that you're paying that's from outside. I have these set rules and regulations and you follow it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to members of family looking after your child, they're not necessarily going to like you know, do it your way, they don't feel that they have to. Yeah. But you need to build that relationship with the person that you, who's looking after your child. You get to know each other, you've got to build that relationship between the two of you and talk it out. And it's going to take time. And you've got to show them your techniques and tell them why you're doing it. And it's going to help them, the children and yourself when you're coming home so that you're not 
always, you know, telling them things differently. And depending on the age as well, you know, you also got to allow your children to experience different types of, you know, uh, learning and teaching that if you were at Bibi's house, for example, you know, she lets you do certain things and I'm okay with that. But when you come home, I have my rules and you're going to be help, you know, doing it my way. Mm. And they have to adapt to it and adjust to it. So there's various ways in which you can deal with that. But you need to build that relationship with that person that's looking after your child, whether they're your relative or not, because that's your child. No matter what, you need to have that close contact and connections so that you know that when you're not around, you know, whether you're sending a text or whether or not you're there or you're having outings with the person that's looking after your child, especially if they're your relative, mm -hmm. to show them that, you know, I have these ways of bringing them up, not because I think I'm better and my way's better, there's benefit to it, there's mm -hmm. reason for it. A lot of the times people are doing it their way because they're trying to say that, you know, my way is the way to go. So understand why they're doing it and maybe improve on it or accept it because maybe you haven't thought of it. So it's a way in which you're seeing it as well. You're not mm -hmm. trying to, you know, put the authority on them because this is my kid or this is my son's, you know, okay, you're the mother, but this is my son's kid as well, for example, and I'm going to bring him up bring your my grandchildren up the way I brought my son up and you know there all these sort of thoughts come into play mm -hmm. because you know everyone wants to take that lead but for the wrong reasons yeah the main yeah. concern are the children of course is yeah. this for their benefit realistically in this day and age what am I doing whoever they are parents grandparents babysitters whoever nannies they all need to consider what's beneficial for the child. When you put the child first and take into consideration the modern way of thinking and believing and you know the current way because that's what they need to grow, to develop, to change, you know, and basically, you know, help themselves even because you're there to assist them so that they don't need that reliance even on us mm -hmm. as adults. Then you look at it from a different perspective. You say it to them and eventually that will actually work. It really does. Inshallah, thank you so much for that. Um, we'll move on to the next viewer, and it's Musa, and he says, "I want to spend as much time with my parents as possibly possible. Sorry, especially at their age, but my wife wants more time with hers, or just us as a family with our kids only. And the weekends are getting more complicated. How do I manage the time so I can balance this where everyone gets what they want and be happy with no issues?" Yeah. Time management, organization skills, you know, while I guess, you know, having your rotor like you so like yeah, using. The, the schedule rotor. <laughs> the schedule. No, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the time, again, we make assumptions as to we need to spend more time, we need to spend less time, we're not having enough time, and that quality time needs to be quality time. When you have quality time with people, mm -hmm. it's not about not having the time, it's about even having a conversation with someone on your way home from work, whether it's talking to your wife or your parents can build that connection and bond mm. that you don't feel the stress. And even if you don't see them for like a few days, it's not a problem. So you've got to use the different methods and you know we can use technology to our advantage. Even if you're sitting at home tired, it's not because, oh, your wife doesn't want you to go. I'm tired, I come late from work. I'm going to FaceTime my parents. I'm going to let them see my face. you know, Or I'm actually going to go out there out of my way on my own and I'm going to see them at a time that you know it's not going to take away my family time with just the family and you've got to switch it up where it's going to be you know constant you know change balance and each one's going to get something mm -hmm. and at the same time we assume that people need certain things but we need to get to the bottom as to what's really available what's mm -hmm. really needed and it's not about even just giving the time it's about really caring when you care these things don't really matter time doesn't matter so when you care for somebody, it's shown in so many ways than just having to spend time. Don't think that, oh, because you could be sit there. A lot of families, they sit together. I'm giving you time, but I'm only watching TV and I'm on my phone, I'm on my laptop, and I'm not actually there with you. Mm. You want to be there with somebody? You be there with someone properly, you know, mindfully. Then it wouldn't matter with the time, you know, yeah. in a sense of, you know, looking at, you know, I've got this weekend free, I don't have it free, and I can't put everyone in, and I just want family together. It wouldn't matter. Mm. You know, when you're at work, you give it 100%. When you're at home, you give it 100%. When you're with your wife, you give it 100%. When you're with your children, you give it 100%. That's how you got to be. That's mindfulness for you, being present and not feeling overwhelmed because that people have to accept that, you know, you know, everyone has, you know, uh, limitations. Everyone has, you know, even me time just for myself. We need all of that. Mm. Um, so just, just don't be too hard on yourself. 
you can't do everything and anything and you need to prioritize and yes time is short with your parents but I'm sure if you have a word with them that you can alternate certain days or you can bring family occasions together with us there's so many occasions where there's birthdays and anniversaries where everyone gets together exactly, or yeah. there are times where you have weekends and say you know I'm gonna go out with my wife just only or just family on our own and it's all okay it doesn't have to be weekly it could be monthly even it depends on your situation. Some parents, um, older parents, they can be a bit demanding. Of course with their they children. can, because they have the time. Yeah, they have the time, so they, yeah. they have they don't expectations have the yeah. that they, they expect their children to do certain things, even though they have maybe a hectic house or home. Yeah. If you're stuck in the middle between your parents and your spouse, and you're sandwiched in the middle, how can you, you're being torn from both sides, basically. You're in a really bad situation yeah. because you're having to please everyone else except for yourself. Again, like I was trying to explain, it's, it's, it depends how you are giving that time. It can be mm. given in so many ways and you can be smart about it. There's different strategies and techniques where you can talk to somebody, give them time, give them energy, give them yourself. And when you do that in various ways, it doesn't mean you physically going out there. Right. You know, you do it in different ways, different techniques, different styles. You okay. know, just sending them your mom a bunch of flowers on the odd day. Don't just wait for Mother's Day. You know, she might just disregard seeing you because she might just think, my son really thought about me when he doesn't even have to. People don't think like that. Mm. Go out of the norm and the routine and just thinking that I'm going there. You know, or just surprise her or even your wife. There's so many ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, even sometimes the old fashioned way, it can work a lot more stronger and powerful. Mm. Very true, yeah. So that's why we need to learn from the old, and the old needs to learn from the new and blend it, and hopefully we'll have an, a huge, massive, beautiful concoction. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that, it's that balance, yeah. isn't it, of both worlds. But being smart, being clever. And, you know, you can, you know, sit at home and, you know, you, the flowers are sent. She's loving it. Yeah. There you go. Job done. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And also the children can learn. They'll be like if you have younger children, they can see how you're adapting to the older yeah. generation as well as them. They're so children. They're so observant, like I had said before. So everything you do impacts your children and eventually they'll start building maybe some skills of how they will treat their yes. grandparents, how they will adapt to the way their grandparents are and how their parents are. So when they go to their grandparents' house, they will, might react in a different way. Yeah. Or um, the way they show respect might be different. Exactly. And we are all about routine mm -hmm. and doing the same things. And sometimes we need to step out of that routine. If we don't see our, you know, and spend time just with the family, with the wife and the children on one weekend, it's not a bad deal because you've done something else to compensate for it during right. the week okay so that's another way you know be smart again you've got to use your you know you've got to use your mind to innovate and create things which is out of the norm so that people don't complain about wanting the norm even though that norm is actually not that necessary when it's just routine anyway mm. you've got to make sure that you give love attention time and respect in various ways right. so that when you don't have the physical time and the ability it doesn't matter Again, I'm looking deeper. Again, I'm looking at something totally different. Again, I'm not looking at something which is just surface. Right. So you need to, you know, come up with different ways of being a certain way that you can show love, time and attention to somebody and they feel it back mm. without you physically being there. Yeah, definitely. And would you say communication seems to be the key in all of this? As in you're Again, coming back to always yeah, voicing your Yeah, but that communication opinion. is so widely used and people don't realize the amount of ways in which we communicate, how we communicate, the way in which we use language, the way in which you know we sit looking at each other and even frowning or having a mm -hmm. facial expression, that's communication. So um, but if you have the right intention and you do things with heart, with passion, with real want, then all of that shows in every form, not just through your words. And people can feel it, they can sense it. Mm. And they won't be demanding more of you because they know that you're there for them and you've given them the support whether it's your wife from the one end or your parents from the other, mm. you can balance it all. Definitely. I mean, I know some families where the, the, the daughter-in-law thinks that she isn't liked by the mm. in-laws. But sometimes I, I think, well, what is it that that person's doing to make them act like that? Maybe with the, the communication um, that we were saying, the facial expressions, the eye contact, the body language, the gestures, all these things play a role. So 
if you're just not giving them eye contact, you're frowning, like you had said, maybe closed arms, not open arms, yeah. not hugging, embracing them. We all them. send signals and messages. Th those yeah. signals are reaching them, and so they are responding with the same similar signals to you. So you think you're not liked, but yet you're not showing them that you like them as yeah. much. Do you think that happens sometimes? That does. Of course it happens a lot. And you've actually made me think about something else because we as humans, we make a lot of assumptions and we generalize and we distort information. And we take one scenario that's happened, we create our own meaning and our own story, we run with it. Mm. Instead of trying to really think that, okay, my mother on just had a bad day and she didn't talk to me, not because she, you know, I walked into the house and she stopped talking, you know, because that's what happens. We'll make that assumption from one incident and that's it, I'm not going there again. You know, why put me in that situation? Mm. Instead of assessing she was tired, or it could be vice versa, where the mother-in-law thinks that of the daughter-in-law, for example. Yeah, you know, definitely. we have these scenarios all the time, and we will run with that story on one incident, make it a whole big deal, and, you know, it means something, it does something without even having, you know, communicated, or even giving them benefit of doubt if you don't want to address it. Mm. And keep going and keep, you know, seeing how that is, you know, being relayed over time. And you might realize it's actually it's nothing or it's just their way. And if it is personal, you can sit down and have a conversation with them or show them who you are without even addressing it. That I'm still there to love you and care for you. Even if I'm not your real daughter, I'm your daughter-in-law, for example. Mm. It's all, all about who you are. And I work with people to transform them so that they can transform themselves and the people around them. And it all starts with you. Thank you very much. A good, a good note to end on. Thank you very much, Fahima. And inshallah, our viewers have benefited from the discussion. Um, but unfortunately, we need to come to an end of the show. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.